care of the same. It just wasn't the same. Alone on Christmas Day. Wait, I'm not harmonizing well. Okay. You go and I'll try and harmonize. Okay. Mm-hmm. What part did you start? I don't know actually how to harmonize. Just, oh, so if I'm if I'm like presents, what a beautiful uh, song. No presents. Let's see. Then I want to go high. I'm scared. I'll go lower. Presents, what a beautiful sign. So you're Wait, that wasn't that bad. Need. No. <laughs> Underneath the tree. You're not even listening, though. No, I, I was. I was. E- oh. <laughs> Have you seen the Mar- Mariah Carey meme that's, it's time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Are we going? Yeah, we got some harmonizing. Oh, oh, thank God. Oh, God. Ramble. Pretty Basic. Thank you to DoorDash and Grammarly for sponsoring this week's episode of Pretty Basic. Hello, guys. Welcome back to Pretty Basic. I am your co-host, Remy Cruz. And I am Alicia Marie. And today, uh, we did not plan it, but it happened again. I think this might be our best matching moment yet. There's a little joke here at the Pretty Basic studio where Remy and I always come to record and without planning like genuinely without planning we're wearing the same thing today we are not only wearing the same thing we're wearing the same brand and the same exact color shout out the brand parallel apparel y'all this was not planned not sponsored no but yeah i'm wearing the new stuff that's coming out in december (gasps) so coming out really soon speaking of which tomorrow if you're listening to this on the day that we drop it tomorrow is the first day of December this year has flown by quite possibly the worst year of my life and I'm so ready to wrap this up with a bow and get moving on well I feel like it was the lawsuit right the lawsuit in case you guys didn't know I had to sue the guy that built my house because I mean feel free to check it out on my vlog channel (laughs) at rem life we are doing vlogmas this month it is Alicia in my ninth year doing vlogmas which we'll get into that later but if you guys watched my vlogmas last year I woke up one morning and my house had flooded and I am very grateful that it was only and has only been in areas in which I don't commonly sit or live in you know like my garage it's happening outdoors so I've been able to move on peacefully as if nothing has happened out of sight out of mind but for the past eight months I've been in an ongoing lawsuit with the developer of my home to basically get money to fix what should have been done properly when I bought my house I mean you would hope that the drainage you would you would hope hope that they would put the drains Above the cement. Yes. You know, but they they happen to put it under the cement. Which, like, why? Like, honestly, kind of innovative. No. It's fun. (laughs) Fun to test. Kind of illegal. Yeah. (laughs) So, anyways, I've been in that uh, along with just, like, family things. It's been a a rough year for me, but I have a really good feeling about 2023. (laughs) Sorry, I just had a flashback to every end of the year where we're like, we have a great, for like in actually, 2019, we were like, 2020 is going to be it. I have to be honest. Actually, I want to go back and listen because I'm pretty sure. And again, this goes with my intuition of uh, being able to tell the gender of babies. I think I just have a decent intuition. Uh, I'm pretty positive. I didn't have a good feeling about 2020. You didn't. I think if we went back to 2019, our end of the year episode, I'm pretty sure I said I didn't have a good feeling. Someone clip it and let me know. I had a decent feeling about 2021. I think I had a better feeling about 2022, but 2023, I have the same adjacent feelings as the summer of Remy. And we all know what happened during the summer of Remy. Yo, if you're an OG listener, the summer of Remy was a time, baby. When I tell you it was a time, like the summer of Remy is exactly what you think it is. Like it, like it wasn't the summer of Remy and Alicia. It wasn't the summer of Alicia. It was the, the summer, summer of Remy. I'm thinking of SpongeBob when he's like, um, imagination, but the instead it's the summer, summer of Remy. <laughs> I think you're going to have the summer of Alicia next year. Uh, Bitch, I hope so. I really do. I think it's (laughs) going to be a fantastic year and I have so many exciting feelings. Well, I am so glad and I'm hoping you are psychic or something like that because I I think we could all use some good energy like that, you know, some good, like going into the new year strong. We need it. We need it. it. Bitch, I need it. 
You need it. I need it. We all need it. Let's manifest. Okay. Oh, let's manifest. Let's manifest. Uh, We will be thriving. 2023. No, no, no. We are thriving. We are thriving. You're so right. I always forget. Speaking of the present. Yes. We are thriving. We are. (laughs) Alicia is uh, getting dick down. Sorry, Chris. Um, (laughs) What'd you say? Present tense is currently. Oh, currently. Yes. yes, yes. (laughs) Alicia's currently being in this moment. Dick down. Uh, Alicia finds love. Remy, Alicia is in love. <laughs> Remy is engaged. Oh, put it out there, bitch. Put it out there. Ring. Remy's house is fixed and dry. Remy, is Remy moving next year? Uh, Remy might be moving. We're not sure. But every now and then you text me and you're like, I think, I think I'm it's ready time. to move. So it would not shock me if you move next year. I am open to it oh for sure we're we getting into see. predictions yes yes, Ooh, yes yes 2023 predictions i think you know what i think i <laughs> hot take no more resolutions we all just pretend we're psychics and we predict i love that that's more fun i think <laughs> i literally like i didn't know what you were gonna say i, I was so scared you were about to be like you're getting knocked up you're about to have a kid and i was like oh don't I, speak that into existence i would also love that no, little baby energy auntie rem auntie rem <laughs> uh well how have you been with your planning of vlogmas oh my gosh i am a little exhausted today yesterday we had the big vlogmas shoot which again if you're listening to this the day it comes out, that means Vlogmas is dropping. Technically the day after tomorrow. Can the we talk about tomorrow. that? Yeah. Just the whole, no, no, no. Well, first of all, your photo shoot was slay-tastic. I got the photos this morning. Oh, send. I want to see. <laughs> I want to see. <laughs> oh, send. send. Um, obviously, if, if you guys don't know what Vlogmas is, and I think it's funny because obviously we are first and foremost YouTubers, mm-hmm. but I know some people listen to the podcast and don't know or don't care to look at our YouTube channels. Vlogmas was started by Miss Glamorazzi, aka Ingrid Ingrid Nelson, uh, over well over a decade ago, where she started this movement that has now become a full on like living, breathing creature of its own. Did you see those TikToks of people being like getting ready for vlogs when they're tagging us? And I was like, oh my God. I'm so excited. (laughs) Basically you vlog every single day Mm -hmm. leading up to Christmas. So December 1st through 25th. But here's the thing. I know, are you going with this? The past couple of years, and again, this is our ninth year. So I do feel as though we are veterans at this point. Oh, a thousand percent. But some people, and everyone can do it in whatever way they want, but some people like to vlog on November 30th as today when this episode drops yes. and upload it on December 1st and make that Vlogmas day one, which I do think makes sense. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, the whole idea of Vlogmas is you're vlogging first to the 25th leading up to Christmas. So technically what we do and what we've always done is you vlog December 1st, upload it on December December 2nd, and that's Vlogmas day one. Yes, except I was, my ego came in full flat. Like whenever I would see bitches upload it the wrong way, I was like, you guys are doing it wrong. <laughs> but you're doing it wrong. And then, no, 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 no. Like it bothered me. I was like, no, like, cause everyone's confused and they're like, wait, what's what? Like, I don't know. Then I was like, I'm going to settle this once from for all. I know I've said this before, but I go to Ingrid's first Vlogmas. Mm -hmm. She in fact uploaded Vlogmas day one on December 1st. And that was the opposite of us. Oh shit. (laughs) Oh shit. I thought you were about to say we've been doing it right. No, we've been doing it right the whole time but we like it's a thing now so i'm like i'm not gonna change it now because like to me that's what vlogmas is but anyways to everyone so funny (laughs) to every other creator in my head who i roasted i was like they don't know what they're doing i'm gonna i apologize this is my formal apology for um thinking you were wrong and i was right so yeah so so we're wrong wait but was there a year in which we flipped then all of our like friends like people who are in like our lifestyle lifestyle girls did it the way we do it Ah, and i feel like more other people who like who I guess just weren't in lifestyle. So I think we kind of, we did make the movement a little like go that let's, way. Let's cut the last 10 minutes and just, I'm just kidding. Oh, I thought you were being serious. No, I was like, no, no it's funny. No, no, I mean, <laughs> we can keep it. No, no, I'm just kidding. No, yeah. uh, I personally oh. like it, but I actually this year and last year, this settled the, the situation. I still uploaded on November 30th, but just a normal vlog. But December 1st for me, vlogmas. I got my intro. Do you want to watch it? Yes. It's not fully done yet. I just had a few notes. Um, but you look fantastic in it. <laughs> obviously. I will. Oh, sorry, I've sneezed. Ooh. Do you want to watch it now? Yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry, I interrupted your sneeze. Okay. Hit play when you're ready. Oh my god. The look at it. <laughs> it's cute, right? Remy. <laughs> Wait. We're in the PB we studio. are so cute. We're cartoons in the PB studio. 
I'm changing the song. Maybe. I haven't decided. animated wait remy this She's is cartoon. so fucking cute it's cute right you wearing the vlogmas the merch we're changing the end the end is not staying don't worry cute right this is fucking adorable you look adorable as a no, cartoon this is, i literally like this part had me dying the <laughs> that's why the slow <laughs> the slow pan the, the blink the, the blink, blink and the pan out <laughs> the, the wing liner oh my so cute God. right i'm really happy with I it i love the pb set it looks iconic oh my god you know what would be cute is if this part is like handwritten because <gasps> that's how it like is on the thing You're so That'd right be really cute. that's a good you idea. could have like a little like pink Wait, circles or something we're taking notes <laughs> so cute right fun. that's adorable fun fun so i love it I, I mean like i feel like you really started the vlogmas intro no no oh my god you know who did for me who? i mean obviously ingrid did it um Elle Fowler. Uh, queen. When she had her- Pioneer. She had um, that one, I think it's her husband now who did the song, right? Alex, Alex Goot. Yes. Is that his name? Alex I guess, Goot? Yeah, her name's Elle Goot now, Yes, right? Alex oh. Goot. I loved. Were you in to the YouTube singers? Oh, yeah. Oh my God. Like the Sam Suey. Yes. You know who I loved? Oh my God. Oh my God. Her name was also Alex. Wait. Hold on. Yes. yes. She did a version of- um cruise florida georgia line she came out right she was in did she i think she i think <gasps> she came out stop i missed that and how she, exciting she has dark hair yes and she yeah she cut it cruise, I think she got married. florida stop wait i have to look her up so sorry i feel so bad alex g yes g. shut <laughs> up oh my god wait i didn't know that how exciting yes. well we hope you are well alex i was such a fan yes. sorry i keep interrupting my god no <laughs> bitch are you kidding please do it's a conversation to me i'm like it's conversational <laughs> it's conversational you know conversational yeah. that's the whole vibe i mean we've all done interest and stuff this last year i overdid myself and i should not have done what i did i just did new interest every single day and it was a lot of work mostly because i didn't plan ahead of time enough which is another common theme in my life it's fine i did watch a video uh the other day i went on this whole like rampage of watching ted talks Love. I told you since Ashley's like gone now, now I watch whatever I want on like you know, on the TV and I just watch a whole bunch of random oh, TED talks. There was one about procrastination oh. and he made me realize I'm like, dude, if that's just how I work, that's how I work. You know what I mean? Like, no, it's not ideal, but like why? Be why fix it if it yes, ain't broke? Yes. That's the saying. Anyways, I procrastinated last year, was super overwhelmed. And the day of I'd be filming intros for the next day. And it just didn't make sense. Like if they were all pre whatever. So this year I still wanted to do something like really dope and cool. Long story short, I had the idea. Why don't I make my own like magazine slash book? And what if it's an actual physical copy? Like not a digital one. Like what if we like physically make a magazine, a catalog? I was really inspired by like vintage Playboy, vintage Victoria's Secret, like those home ca holiday catalogs that you flip through. Oh my God. Yeah. I that forgot was about that. Yes. Oh my, you'd almost like collect them. With you the, know? Pajamas. With the pajamas. Yeah. And the little, the, in the corner, the little price. Yes. I forgot about yes. those. So I was like, what's the chance I can in two weeks <laughs> have a shoot get 25 photos and make it like Bitch. an advent calendar i know i'm insane i'm actually insane but i have to say everything has like fallen into place the shoot yesterday was so good last week we went up to big bear i got like a few sh shots then which honestly that helped so much because i felt like i was like more prepared yesterday i have to show you a few since we're showing each other stuff i think also next year let's have start the conversation october 15th so unfortunately uh uh, TK's been trying she back in June she was like we should think about vlogmas oh. but I was like I don't know what I want to do and yeah. I, of course I won't know until two weeks out and that's where I, I do need to work on that do you have an idea for next year already maybe yes okay good no I, I have a good because it's gonna be 10 years so I was like <gasps> okay all out. okay we got it we got this oh here's my selects so you can look through the ones I actually liked you don't have to look at them all up there <gasps> It is Don't Worry Darling. It, it, it really I, is. I, I oh, the know. lashes. What are, what's that style called? Like that lash? Like the 60s, like twiggy. Twiggy, like yes, very, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. <gasps> so essentially each day is like an advent calendar with like different photos. That little blue baby doll is so it's cute. It's cute, right? I would like that. <gasps> 
the Parada. The they Parada. Made it in. They did that this. is so Isn't that cute. It's so like very gorgeous. retro. Parker, my stylist, Love. was able to finesse and rent this vintage Chanel ski helmet. <laughs> and the thing was, is they were like so strict, and they're like, you cannot get any makeup on this. You cannot damage it. If we were to like damage it in any way, it was going to cost like $10,000. For what was it? A vintage Chanel ski helmet. Oh my. But you have to see the shot. It is beautiful. I forget the exact photographer's name, but we were in, we had the, the inspo shot was of this like amazing fucking photographer <gasps> and we kind of like recreated it. Yeah. Oh That's my high, right? God. <laughs> Oh my God. We Ooh. were like cranking it. I was like, boom, change, boom, change. Where did the you snow get globe, a the snow fucking, globe? I googled, a giant snow globe. I Googled life size snow globe. And you just found one in LA? But yeah, they rent it. And they brought it out? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For like literally 30 minutes. That is insane. <laughs> so I'm excited. We um, So now so I, hot. I sent the photos over. They're getting edited right now. And then <gasps> they're going to a layout designer who's then going to mock up the magazine. And then we just need like two days, two to three days for printing. And my goal, knock on wood, is to be able to actually sell a very limited amount of the actual magazines so people can buy them. <gasps> it looks like REM Beauty. Yes. Very Go REM Beauty. Go to the Beauty. last one, because the last one's like the actual one I'm going to use of the helmet. Stunning. Stunning. So cool. Wow. So we took off my foundation on my forehead and I put a napkin here. Oh, I was like, I can't yeah. get foundation on it. <gasps> I cannot believe. That's fucking amazing i know the so fact excited. that you pulled that off so quickly honestly that was parker crazy i know right i'm like Wah. but i am really excited for vlogmas and normally you travel a lot the past few years for vlogmas i feel like so i'm excited to like have you all to myself just be here <laughs> to cuddle i can't wait it's gonna be fantastic um i just look forward to making them is fun it can be a little bit Oh my God, we didn't even say the set's decorated. Oh, should we put this at the beginning? <laughs> no, put no, it at the it's beginning. Funny, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> Merry Chrysler. Merry Chrysler. Happy holidays, everyone. We tried. Well, um, actually, we didn't. Our producer did, and she killed it. Shout out, Serena. So, in case you guys missed it, I got the flu very, very badly, and I could not leave my bed for like four days straight. It was miserable. And when I tell you that DoorDash absolutely saved my butt, it absolutely saved my butt. So while I was sick, Cal took care of me a bunch, but he was also working. So there were so many things that I needed that I couldn't bother him for. Like all I wanted was wonton soup from my local <laughs> Chinese restaurant. I wanted like Gatorade, all these sorts of things. And DoorDash really was my best friend during those miserable four days. DoorDash has over 300,000 partners. So you can support your neighborhood go-tos, like my Chinese restaurant, or choose from your favorite national restaurants like Popeye's, which I love, Chipotle, and the Cheesecake Factory, all of my favorites. Guys, it's not just restaurants. You can get drinks, snacks, household items. I've literally door dashed memory cards before when I need one um, in an emergency, and you can get it in under an hour. Also, you're supporting your communities. So from the stores and restaurants to the dashers driving around, each purchase provides a new opportunity for everyone involved because with DoorDash, there's a neighborhood of good in every order. For a limited time, our listeners can get 50% off up to a $20 value and $0 delivery fees when you download the DoorDash app and enter code PRETTYBASIC. That's 50% off up to a $20 value and $0 delivery fees when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code PRETTYBASIC. Don't forget that's code PRETTYBASIC for 50% off up to a $20 value and $0 delivery fees with DoorDash. Subject to change, terms apply. With Vlogmas, it is a, it really depends on your mental capacity for the year. Mm -hmm. uh, one year I was extremely heartbroken and that one was a little rough to get through. <laughs> My favorite though is you're like, I can't do this anymore. You took one day off and you're like, I, I'm I great can't. now. That's so funny. That was horrible. I feel like I like was uh, publicly spiraling. Like that yeah, wasn't very it. fun. But other than that, like it really, if you're in a good mental space, headspace and you uh, do enough like prep, it honestly is really fun. Just honestly, I feel like it just gives you a little taste of daily vlogging oh and how mentally draining that can be and physically draining it can be on someone because you obviously vlog all day and then you go to bed and then you either, either you edit during the night or you wake up in the morning and you edit it and then you start your day again. And it's just over and over and over. And it is really fun. But then when you think about people like Logan Paul or Casey Neistat or these oh people God. who have, or like who are big daily vloggers or who I were. I like it's not much of a thing anymore though. Shay Carl well, was big back in oh the day. Oh my God, he was huge. I mean, even Jack Cook on TikTok, he does his daily yes. vlogs. Like I watch those, which they're incredible. And shout oh out God, to Jack so Cook. How does he, like, there are some days where I just have to lay on the couch all day. Oh my God. But he can't do that. No. So I, at, at some point, 
it becomes living for the vlog and not living for yourself. And we obviously just get like a very small taste of it. But I look at those people like Casey Neistat who have had huge burnouts and who have talked about how like, you know, he's a dad Mm -hmm. and you sometimes have to like prioritize the vlog over other things in your life. Hot take. I feel like a lot of the male daily vloggers who get burnt out, a lot of the times it's them realizing it's come down to my marriage or my channel and I have to, like, I can't choose. I obviously have to work on my marriage, so I need to take time off of the vlog, where I feel like, in general, stereotypically saying, I feel like more females are more like, I'm burnt out myself and I need to take a break. I feel like men just are, it's like interesting seeing the difference. I feel like there's always a marriage thing, at least in the very popular vloggers that I've seen. I think even- Is Robin Atwood still doing daily vlogs? Oh my God. I don't don't think he is. I don't know. I mean, the thing is at the end of the day, you can do it for a month. You can do it for a year. You can do it for five years. At some point you burn out. You just, mm-hmm. there's no way that you can physically do it every single day of your life. Like there's just no way. There is a Also a cap that's to boring. It. Yes. It gets redundant. Yes, you know? I agree. Also, it's just like, it is as much as people probably look and are like, oh, that's easy to do. Uh, I challenge those people to just try making, creating a new video every single day. It's like, it, it's just physically and mentally taxing. That's what it is. Yeah. I think something as like, since we've done this for so long, Something that I always tell myself is it can be a different format than I'm used to. It doesn't have to be like, wake up morning. Oh my God, hi, here's my day. Like technically it's just a video. So I think like challenging ourselves creatively to be like, it could be a two minute video. Mm. It could be a three minute, like dope, like, like video where we don't talk. Like it could be, it's just anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so I think that's something where I try to like creatively, like remember, like it does just cause old YouTube was a certain way. doesn't mean like that's what it needs to be today. I agree. You know? In my head though, I'm like, if I were to do that, people are not happy with well because we've trained them for nine years yes. <laughs> and you're that's gonna get us. Mis- i mean the, this is the first christmas that i'm staying here fi- mm-hmm. like physically i'm not going back to cal's family and the past three years i've that i've done vlogmas i've just pre-filmed an extra three videos yeah. for those days that i've been gone which obviously making two videos in one day and having those ready is a lot of work as well but i'm looking forward to just this is the first christmas i'm spending it in my house oh my, my god remy isn't that crazy i've never spent a christmas in my home yet the first year i I was in my house. I was like, Christmas is at mine, y'all. Yeah. Well, I, I'm like hosting my family Yay. this year. I'm excited to cook for everyone. Like I already, this is also a random tangent, but my family's really big on uh, Christmas, on Christmas Eve. Mm-hmm. Like we do a big Christmas Eve dinner. We open up presents at night. Obviously when I lived at home with my parents, Christmas day was a big thing. But ever since I moved out, my family's house doesn't have enough space for like the whole family to spend mm-hmm. the night. So we've kind of transitioned over to just Christmas Eve and then Christmas day, I usually just like chill. Yeah. So that's also kind of been a reason why I go back with Cal's family so frequently is because they do more of like an extravagant situation for like the full two days. But I've decided when I have my own family, I made a whole plan with my mom yesterday. I can't wait. This is what I'm going to do. I'm big on hosting, so I can't wait. And obviously when you get older and you have your own kids, I feel like holidays are a little bit more special for the, like, mm. their childhood years. Halloween, Christmas, things like that. So Christmas Eve, I'm going to do the full traditional Christmas spread of like, you know, normal foods, potatoes, green bean casserole, sweet potatoes, all those things. And then we'll go to bed. They can open up one present. That was what I did growing up. Did you do that too? We did, yeah. One present. Up, it did. was usually pajamas. Oh no. <laughs> it's always like the, like the, like the, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That you wear to bed. You yeah. take them out, you put them on. They go to bed. And, but before then, like the whole reindeer snacks, the cookies, Cute. and then I'll gobble some up while they're sleeping. We wake up in the morning, we open up presents. We will do a Christmas breakfast, chill all day. And then at night I want to do a Korean dinner. <gasps> I thought that'd be so fun. Like a Korean barbecue situation. Can you can I come. come? <laughs> of course you can come. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to do conjoined Christmases anyway. Obviously. Oh, no, you're saying all of this. And all I think of is I'm, I feel so bad for my kids. Why? Because like your kids are gonna have like such cool ass traditions and like the the reindeer snacks. Did you not do that growing up? Not cookies really. Cookies and, and carrots and celery. No. <gasps> oh, that was so fun. Cookies and carrots and celery. You put out cookies for Santa and then you put out snacks for the reindeer. So like carrots and celery. Wait, I thought you meant you like you made them like. Th- oh yeah, but we didn't do that. Oh, I would leave it by the fireplace. This is so sad. If there's any kids around you listening to this, if you have any, any little ones, I'm about to say a little, a little something. My parents didn't tell me, like, didn't let me even think Santa was real. So I never <gasps> once like thought Santa was real. Really? Yeah. I think. I just, mean, I think that's also fine. It's totally fine. Yeah. But I had so many friends be like, "You never like like put out cookies for Santa," and I was like, "No." Oh, well, you <laughs> I know put what? out cookies for Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> we put out holy water. <laughs> 
<laughs> we, we didn't, to clarify. You did or you did not? We did not. Oh. We did not put cookies out for Jesus. I'm sure he'd love it, though. <laughs> he would. He needs a little snack. He's got a long ways to go. Um, I, I, On the flip side, I mean, I knew about Santa until, like, a uh, normal-ish age, Do I would remember, say. like, the moment? I don't remember. Oh, wait. Filing back. Mm-hmm. I think it had to do with Shane. I think Shane probably spoiled it for me, to be honest. <laughs> Your younger brother? <laughs> yeah. He, little dipshit. Little brothers are the worst. No, I'm pretty sure he spoiled it for me. My parents have like a Romeo and Juliet balcony situation in their okay. house. So I remember we would try and stay up all night and watch Santa come because the, the tree was in the living room. Oh. Uh, we would always fall asleep, though. I remember that. But I, I learned in like a normal age, probably like. 12 or so that might be a little is old to find out actually like, I was like, is, is that, that old I maybe like maybe like nine. Like seventh grade okay no, no no then it okay. must have been like fifth fourth or fifth grade i feel like okay. i found out why i'm saying this i had a friend in no. eighth grade going into ninth grade i think truly in high school who still believed and at that point you're just openly talking about it yeah like with your friends you're like oh my god remember when we used to think santa was real yeah like, her face her face wait it's like I just told her the tooth fairy wasn't real at the is same time. Is she okay? Like, no, I was <laughs> probably not. No, like genuinely, like, I don't know. If I spent half of my life truly believing, like truly, yeah, like genuinely. I'm like, I'm so in between. Cause I'm like, it was, it was sweet. No, but also that's kind of on the parents that's for like letting them. for the kids. <laughs> when I tell you, I vividly remember her face. I was like, oh. you know what it's giving? <laughs> you bitch um so sorry you remember um i just remember did you her face oh poor thing wait, did you know about the tooth fairy did you believe in the tooth fairy yeah because my parents would do that and i remember being so excited to get the money but mm-hmm. I, I remember one time i pulled out a tooth and i didn't put it under my pillow and i didn't tell them <gasps> so, and then i was like this shit's not real <laughs> <laughs> like my little like cynical little, my little entrepreneur self be like my money <laughs> i was like real. and then my mom was like why didn't you tell me oh my <laughs> I was god like, i knew it was you guys <laughs> i think shane i'm pretty sure shane was very similar to that i was so i believed it all i would like I, did you ever tie your tooth up with floss i was too scared oh i would do it with the floss and then tie it to the door and then shut it so that it would rip my teeth out oh my god no see that terrified me but one time i was at the dentist and they said they were gonna have to pull one of my teeth that was already loose and i was terrified because i thought i had to get a shot and i was like scared did they just rip it out so i go to the bathroom <gasps> i go to the bathroom oh, no and i pull my tooth out oh no, no no but this is where dumb bitch comes in I go back to the chairs and nothing happened. And I didn't say anything. They're like, it was the wrong tooth. <laughs> they were like, what happened to your tooth? Wait. And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> and then I like threw it away. Cause I was like, oh, I gotta get rid of it. And I made 20 bucks I off know. that. I know. 20? Bitch, I got like a dollar. <laughs> how much? Yeah, but I, okay, I feel so bad for my kids. Your kids are gonna grow up getting $20 bills for a tooth. If, a I, molar, if it was a molar, we would get $5. I think that the first couple were 20 <laughs> and then I think that the tooth yeah. fairy hit a recession. <laughs> tooth, <laughs> tooth fairy was like, damn. Damn, she's, she's losing these too quick. She's tying yeah. them to the door. When you forget, you're about to lose like, how many teeth are in your mouth at once? Yeah, like 20 something? Yeah. <laughs> they're like, damn, that's like Wait, so they bucks. weren't even taking the tooth out? No, they were going to have to, but I did it myself. Oh. And then I go back in the chair and they go to take it out and it's gone. <laughs> Your mom's like already paid for it. And she's like, yeah, <laughs> they're like, where'd it go? And I was like, I don't know. I was like embarrassed. I swallowed it. Isn't that so my personality? Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I get it though. It was scary. Like the idea of losing your teeth is kind of crazy. And like, it was funny because it never hurt that bad, but it felt like it was going to hurt so bad. Yeah. Like, it, like you really were like, holy. I met someone recently that has two baby teeth still. Like How? in their adult teeth, they just never came oh, out. Oh, they never had the one behind it. Right? Is that what happened? I don't I know. She so. just was like, they're front. She's like, they're just my baby teeth still. Oh, that's crazy. 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 Also, side note, just going back to like Shane being a little devil yeah. and like ruining everything for me. Side note, he also would like when we were young if we said a bad word we'd get our mouth washed out with soap or we they'd put hot sauce on our tongue but Shane was like and he was he was like little boys I feel like are just kind of like he was he's a troublemaker yeah he's great now but he at like the age of like seven or eight would know if he said a bad word he'd get hot sauce on his tongue so what did he do he would start eating hot sauce to get used to the taste like an eight-year-old so that when he would say the word it wouldn't hurt his tongue no wonder you don't like spicy stuff. Me? I'm fine. 
I'm like okay you don't with it. Like, but like you like more like with like Mexican food or something. You oh yeah, I'm not. Really I'm like not huge sauce. on spice. Yeah, that's fun. Oh, that's probably why. I know. Isn't that interesting? That's oh, insane. The idea. Do you ever get your mouth washed out with soap? No, I never. That was oh. such a thing. <gasps> like now, I feel like not many like parents really don't do that. Oh, I can like go right back to that that idea. Oof. Oh, it was so bad. It was. So I get gross. A spanking. <gasps> a spanking. I get a little spanking. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I was always the one in trouble. Ashley never was. It's the younger sibling. I know. I feel like Shane and I. I'm, I'm hearing similar things. Shane would do everything that you're saying. Oh my God. And Ashley and I would just be like. Like we didn't do it, but no. y'all would get in trouble. We get in trouble. <laughs> Actually, this is, I've talked to you about this, but I was recently triggered because I was watching the movie, This is 40. And it's, have you watched that movie yet? No. By the way? I mean, it's an older movie, but it's incredible and Cal and I watched it together and it ended and we both are kind of like that was almost like a little bit too real it was beautifully done it was really great it's a Judd Apatow movie with Leslie Mann Paul Rudd oh my god uh, and then Paul Iris Rudd. and um yes. Maude Apatow they're all laying on the bed and the older daughter Maude is like laying down watching tv at the, f- the foot of the bed and the little sister starts just like poking <laughs> and, pu- and pushing and kicking and then like puts like a wet willy in her ear yeah and the older sister goes like oh my god and like yells at her and of course the parents go they get mad at Maude they're like stop screaming like no you need like stop doing that when it's obviously was the antagonization of the younger oh. sister and I was triggered because that was my whole childhood wrapped up in 20 seconds and Ashley would have been triggered right there with you and Shane and I would be laughing and we would get in trouble and it's like stop yelling we're like <laughs> it's funny because it's like the older siblings should know so much better but at the same time they like they're like what two years older like yes that's always the argument it's like you should know better but I'm like like what would bring it like it was just an innate feeling to antagonize Ashley. Oh, it's like fun. It's like bonding. Like I love you, so I'm gonna fucking like <laughs> that like never would cross like, my I'm mind. I'm gonna go through your shit in your bedroom. <laughs> that would literally never cross my mind. Is that just like a biological it, thing? I have no idea. It literally like in Freaky Friday, I'm the little brother. Oh my yes. I'd like read her diary. <laughs> With a bra on your head. <laughs> like, <laughs> Shane was so annoying. He would just like uh, push like we get into an elevator push all the buttons like just would be so annoying yeah. i'm like why can't you just i stand think there? I, I would just be bored i, I don't know <laughs> i would love to like I, we should look at a ted talk on that honestly oh my god i will the fact that we have so many similarities <laughs> yeah it has to be a biological thing i don't know man <sighs> For many of you in school, you're almost at winter break, but not before some big papers, projects, and, you know, midterms are ahead. I know you're excited for that break, but to finish the semester strong, turn to Grammarly's digital writing assistant to help you out. You guys, I recently had to send a very, very, very important email, and I was really nervous about my grammar. (laughs) So I obviously turned on Grammarly, and when I tell you guys, I've never felt more confident in any decision that I've ever made in my entire life. It is amazing whether you're writing, you know, school papers, specific emails, maybe recipes for your cooking website, whatever it may be, just using Grammarly and being able to feel confident about that choice was an absolute game changer. If you're like me, um, I was the student who procrastinated a lot. And when you procrastinate, you can get very careless errors like spelling or commas and Grammarly can help you catch all of those errors. Okay, so if you're a student, it's literally no brainer. You have to get Grammarly. There's no reason not to get it. The free version of Grammarly covers spelling, grammar, and punctuation suggestions, and the Grammarly Premium comes with advanced features. There's like a built-in plagiarism detection and clarity full sentence rewrites, which basically help you make your work much easier to read. So improve your grades with fewer all-nighters by using Grammarly. Sign up for free today at Grammarly.com slash basic and get 20% off when you're ready to upgrade to Grammarly Premium. That's G-R-A-M-M-A-R-L-Y dot com slash basic. I don't know how we got onto that from Vlogmas, but definitely go subscribe to our Vlogmas mm-hmm. um, on our second channels, Vlog channels. Mm-hmm. Alicia Marie Vlog slash Rem Life. Oh, slash Rem Life. What so, else is uh, What else is new? Oh my God. Okay. How are you? What's new? Uh, I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. How are you doing? I'm going to say well, because I know that's the proper answer. As opposed to good? As opposed to good. Oh, we're doing good well. You said well. So well, I was like, good. oh, you're so eloquently spoken. <laughs> you always know all the actors' names. Like, by, like you're so, that's like a fun fact. Remy is always like this person. But, and I'm like, I don't even know who you're talking about. Like, there's a few I know. No, but, it's, um, no it's embarrassing how much I no, can store up here. So, and yet I could not tell you anything that is worth knowing. You know what I've been doing lately? And I feel like such a fucking bitch. Huh? No, this is bad. I really think I'm having memory problems. You forget people's names. 
lately I've been reintroducing myself to people <gasps> and I'm like, hi, so nice to meet you. And they're like, we've worked together. Like, they say, do they say that? They're like, so they're vis- visibly confused. And oh, I'm like, no, it wasn't like, oh, in passing, like, oh, Alicia, that's very embarrassing. Even the other day, remember, I was like, wait, go to that person. Remember we were at a party and I, and you were like, oh, like, let's go say hi to this person. I was like, who, which one is he? Which one is he? Who was it? I was drunk. Um, Cut this. Oh, yes, yes. yes. Like, I should know who that is. Actually, to be honest, I was so drunk, but I remember being like, she doesn't know. No. (laughs) What? Literally, I told Abigail yesterday, our manager, and she was like, it's okay. Every time you're around him, you're drunk. And I was like, no, I get that, but that's not an excuse. Like, I should know. Yeah. Like, I literally couldn't pick him out of a crowd. Like, that's so embarrassing. (laughs) And, and, and when I first- I don't know who that that man is. (laughs) I'm like- you can see walking down the street. But I like know the name. So I just, it's been so embarrassing because especially anytime you come to LA, you you encounter those people and you're like, they reinduce or something to me and they don't know me and they're so rude. Like, and I've said that about people. I'm like, ew, like, just be nice. You're like, what the fuck? You're like, don't act like you don't know people. I'm becoming that person. And it's not intentional. But what's sad is I'm like, I'm worried <laughs> about my mental state. I'm worried, Rem. Maybe... I need to look up brain food. Maybe, okay, maybe like walnuts are really yeah. good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> maybe like before you go to a shoot or something too, you can like quiz yourself a little bit, I like try. really check. Try a little even, harder. Even the <laughs> photographer, you were like, oh no, like we work, he was at your, what's it called? You too? literally worked with him last week? <laughs> <laughs> no, like that happened. It's been, guys, and that's only what I've shared. In your defense, <laughs> there's been a lot of things going on, but I think like, Walnuts. Walnuts. <laughs> Avocado. I didn't think some, some healthy fats. <laughs> some some uh, life hack me. Yeah. <laughs> Give me all the life hacks. My grandpa swore by walnuts for brain health. He really did. Okay, I'll get some today. Um, I Laura, think can we get some today? That could be good. <laughs> Sorry, I had to say that because no, it's no. really embarrassing. That's been happening to me. I think just like maybe flashcards could be really well, good. Well, I already started saying nice to see you instead of nice to meet you. Yes. And instead of saying, hi, I'm Alicia, I'm just going to be like, Hi, nice to see you. (laughs) It's just, it's embarrassing. It's honestly so bad. I wonder, like, is there a point where you can't meet any more people in your brain? Like, do you know what I mean? I feel like actually, like, even. No, I don't think so. I'm even thinking of, like, meet and greets when people are like, hi. And I'm like, I know I've seen you before. Or I'm like, oh, my God, we've met. And they're like, no, we've never met. I'm like, fuck. Mm. That happened to me the other day at the Fenty thing. I was like, oh my God, I'm like, hi, good to see you. And they're like, we've never, never met. met. I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Honestly, good for these people for calling you out. No, uh, <laughs> yes, right? I know. Please call me out. Please call me out. And I will say, at least I own it where I'm just like, ah, oh, fuck me. Yeah. <laughs> like, instead of like, tr- I don't I try to play I it off. I swear, I know we have. No, I'm literally I like, know wow. We have. Fuck my life. I'm so sorry. I think flashcards could be good. Flashcards. Maybe just like a, like a scroll on the Instagram just before a shoot, I before know. a meet and greet, a little, you know. <sighs> I have, and walnuts. That's all I could say. And walnuts, okay. I think okay. that'd be good. It might also just be a sentiment of getting older. Don't tell me that. I also, this is 30. I've been feeling pretty old because I just got put into a group chat for my 10 year reunion. At least you got a group chat. <laughs> you, well, yours was in like peak COVID, so they weren't going to do it. Yeah, they just never had it. Oh my God. Uh, like, was it, like, what, what what was the text? Were there a whole bunch of numbers you didn't have saved? No, because it's so, I was on ASB, which is like student council. So, so you it had was, to throw it. Uh, right? I'm pretty sure it's like the, the president of your class. I wasn't president. Oh, okay. I was the commissioner of performing arts. Of course you were. Um, But... I'm pretty sure it's like the president's job to put it back on or like the, cause we had like an ASB president, like an overarching president and then like a senior class president. So then to oh. them to in tandem, I know we're supposed to work okay. on it. They did. They started a Facebook group chat. Uh, I checked my Facebook randomly for something and I was like, oh, wow. Hello everybody. How are we all doing? Wait, it's crazy cause you always hear, like when you're in high school, you think about your 10 year reunion. We I just know. did the Romeo and Michelle high school reunion Halloween look. Has anyone listening been to a 10 year reunion? And please comment below your experience. I'm sure they have. I, okay, I just want, yeah, I have a lot of questions for all these people. Is it losery to go to your 10 year high school reunion? Is it like, is it fun? Would it be weird if I don't go? I have many a question. I think it's so, depends on your school, your class, your vibe, like your friends. Yeah. Like, did you have a fun class where you're like, oh, everyone's gonna go? Like, on a, like I don't know. I feel like you and Murph and Kay will just like- We're, Murph's forcing me to go. Yeah. So we're gonna go and allegedly it's just happening. Like it's very, 
casual, like at a brewery or like a yeah. bar situation. Uh, but it's really weird to be put in that chat. I mean, it was like an old chat that was revived from a decade ago. And so I have to tell you a funny story. So I was talking to Eli about it because Eli was in high school with me he and was he was older, a year right? older okay. than me. But again, either their class just dropped the ball or because COVID. COVID was still pretty rampant at that time, they didn't have a reunion. But he, well, he wasn't sure yet because he wasn't in ASB, so he wasn't oh sure. But he was checking his Facebook group and he was seeing talks about a reunion happening. And so he's like looking and they're saying like, oh, we're gonna meet at this place, like this time. And he looks and he's like, wow, that's so crazy. They're doing it in Ventura, which is like on the way to Santa Barbara, in case you don't know, that's probably like uh, two, two and a half hours from our high school. He's like, that is so crazy, but I guess like I'll go. I've got nothing better to do. So he was like, started making plans. He made some plans with Brie to go. And then those fell through. He made some plans with our other friends to go. Those fell through. So he was like, I guess I'm just not going to go. I'm not going to go to this alone. Like that's just so lame. And so it happens and he's checking Facebook. He's seeing photos and he's like, oh my God, like, I don't know how I don't recognize any of these people or their names. This is so crazy. Wait, it wasn't. <laughs> He misses the reunion. The next day in the chat, he's like, guys, I can't believe we missed it. And they're all like, Eli, did you not read this chat? He scrolls up. They all realize they've been in the wrong Canyon High School group chat for a decade. <laughs> they've been at the Ventura Canyon High School. We're stuck. my face for a decade. What? Oh, thank God he, he didn't go. He, he wouldn't have known literally anyone. I, I he mean, he like, would have still had a great time, but. He would have had a great time. <laughs> If anyone could have a good time, it's Eli. Yeah. But he was like, I don't recognize any of these names. Thank God he didn't go. So, also, the, if, if, the, the two hours away. Yeah, that should have like, given yeah, it away. Uh, yeah, yeah. He was like, oh my God, why are we doing it so far? But okay. So that's a good note to everyone. Make sure you check that you're in the right high school this Facebook page. Maybe that's why I never got one because I'm in the wrong. Yeah, oh, probably. <laughs> so I don't know how mine's going to go, but obviously you can come. And I think it'll oh, just be- Oh, I would love to come. Oh, you're gonna, I already knew you were coming. <laughs> I figured you'd That'd go. be such a good PP episode. We should do it live where we record there. And I'm like, hey guys, we are, I'm we in wear the bathroom. Halloween costume. Yes, 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 yes. I'm like, I'm in the bathroom. <laughs> Everyone's wanting a photo with Rem. Like, <laughs> oh my God, her first ex-boyfriend who said he's she was high maintenance <gasps> is here and he's looking at her and he's heading on her. And I'll be like, Cal. Sweet, sweet man. Oh my God, that, that's funny. I know. I We'll see how it like, goes. What did you think you would be doing around like 10 years ago for your tenure? That's a good question. Realistically, I picture being no married thoughts. with kids. <laughs> you, I know you did. I don't think I did. I think I was just praying to have a boyfriend. I also thought I would be so old. I know. You know, like, oh. I feel old, <laughs> but I feel so young no, still. Yeah. But that's what old people say. <laughs> I hate it. And life just goes by so much faster. Okay, so I, I, I know we all hear the sentiments from everyone being like, this year went by so fast, this year went by so fast. Is this just life now? I is there ever going to be a general consensus of a year where we're like this year? Oh, I guess 2020. Oh, that year dragged yeah, on, yeah. but that was not a fun reason to drag on. So I'm like, is it just the, like this forever now? Every year so. we're going to be like, it's faster and faster. Yeah. I don't want that. Me either. I miss when years felt long I know. for fun reasons. But I think that's because we were sitting at a desk every day. That's true. Every day from like seven to three, you that's know? That's true. That's true. Damn. Okay, I really want to segue and talk about these Taylor Swift tickets. I was not able to get any. You're looking at- You got some? You didn't know. You didn't know? Shut the fuck up. Wait, you didn't know? Why, how did you get some? <laughs> you didn't know? I didn't tell you? No! You're looking at the winner of four floor tickets to the first show on St. Patrick's Day in Glendale, Arizona, everyone. Winner. I can't believe I didn't tell you. What? I didn't win. So, oh. so <laughs> Abby, Cal's sister, lives in, in Arizona, and she really wanted to go, and she had the pre-sale code. And so she somehow got four floor tickets, and I'm Wait. going with her. I can't believe I didn't tell you. Did you see the statistics in which people got, you have a better chance of getting into Harvard than you did at getting tickets to the Taylor Swift stadium tour. <laughs> Isn't Wait. that crazy? That means I'm gonna have to buy resale and be up in the nosebleeds. I'm so, I can't believe I didn't tell you. I can't believe you didn't tell me either. I'm I thought so, we were going together. I thought I did tell you. I oh, figured no. we were gonna go to other shows <laughs> together. I already knew we were. Wow, I can't wait for you to have a meet up. I, what, I, what I love is that it's the first. The first one. I'll just FaceTime you the whole time. No, I'm gonna be there. Okay. I'm really gonna be okay, there. Okay, yeah, 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 wait. Are you yeah. gonna come to the first I'll one? I'll come, yeah. Okay, perfect. 
well, then I don't have to FaceTime you, but we get to see it before because she's not coming to LA till August. I so know. that's five months in between that we have it visualized. It was so crazy seeing everyone on social media, like just being in the waiting room and like refreshing and refreshing and refreshing. And I'm glad that she did say something being like, y'all need to figure this out. Yeah. Like, my, like all of these, honestly, there is such a faulty system. The tickets when they resale, there's like other people are profiting so fucking much off yeah. of this like it's so it's there's like it's like the black market of tickets do yeah. you know what i mean yeah. and like it's just a normal thing i'm like that's fucked up because one at least the artist should be getting something of that ten thousand dollar ticket that's being sold you know what i mean like it just doesn't make sense i think who gets the kickback though is Ticketmaster or StubHub or whoever's doing like the the selling i believe they get a kickback of that they actually do of these resellers yeah so, so i think that's it. why it's such a corrupt system yeah. and Ticketmaster being a monopoly yeah like the whole situation, I don't understand how there wasn't a cap. And if I were Taylor Swift, I'd be pissed. And I'm glad she said something. I feel like she took a little too long to say something, to be mm. fully honest. But why didn't they have a certain amount set for the, like, the, there was like the that. Pre -sale the, thing. The, the, there were two pre-sales yeah. that went on. Why was there not a cap for each of those to then leave, like, 80% for general? I don't understand I no how they didn't have any sort of plan it didn't seem like yeah for all these people like I think it's so like I've never seen anything happen like this before also I I don't know how I feel about credit cards being the way to get in it's like if you have Amex if you have um Capital One like I think it's also just a little dangerous because opening a credit card is not a willy-nilly thing no like it's something shouldn't. that should be taken very seriously yeah and the fact that I think they were I mean I know Capital One was probably promoting like they wanted of to course, do this so people would sponsor. open that's I think a really dangerous thing honestly if you're not prepped to have a credit card you should not be opening a credit card yeah yet. so I think to entice people to do that could be a little bit dangerous I would agree with that but I actually really do agree with that I will say I saw TikToks that were so funny and it was people being like honestly Taylor Swift is walking right now so Beyonce can run because they're she's figuring she's, they're figuring out all of the <laughs> Ticketmaster like stuff like all of that like chaos so that way when Beyonce goes on tour it'll be smooth and I literally was dying I was like that's so funny I can't believe that they just didn't have a like a, a plan I feel like they probably did I just to me it looks like it didn't they didn't have a plan well think about how when we drop merch which is like an, a, an astro, a little dot. It's one of the pieces of confetti that's going to come out of her cannon. When the stadium is stadiuming and yeah. there's confetti yeah. and Taylor Swift is waving goodbye and there's there's all the confetti. We're, we're one. We're the confetti that one. got stuck on someone's hair that they yes. can't see on the yes. back of their head. It didn't even get its moment. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, like even, even when we drop something, you know, these companies will be like, yeah, the website can handle it. Boom. Website crashes. And we're like, guys, we tried to prep. They said they could. And that's why I feel like online you always see that happening. I cannot imagine on her level no her being like we talked to them they said they could handle it even all the promoing that she's done like music video like all of that shows the demand and for that to like st like that's like oh I can't imagine well I don't understand why anybody could get on like I think there should have been to even get onto the site you should have entered the code first and I didn't do the code so I'm not quite sure maybe this is how they did it, but I don't think so. So they had a surplus amount of people that weren't even able to get tickets, whether they didn't have the code nor a Capital One card, but they're still on the site, which is causing it to crash. Yeah. Like there should have been like a, an a locked thing. Yeah. yeah. So you couldn't even enter it. So then maybe they could handle it better. I truly don't know how the internet works either. I know, right? But I did see this girl before they announced that they weren't doing the general sale anymore and they had to cut it down. She went through all the stadiums and basically like put all of the seats together in one, which I think would have been about like, I, I might be getting the numbers wrong, but I think she said uh, there was like what, 40 ish dates. Mm -hmm. And then I think there were probably like two and a half million tickets to be sold. And so, and Taylor Swift posted like 2.4 million tickets were sold. Did you see that on her mm -hmm. thing? So the girl went through and she was like, okay, well with every stadium, there's like an X amount of people that can sit in it. You have to tailor probably about like one fifth that aren't able to be sold because it's behind the stage. Uh -huh. So then if you count all those, and then she broke it down between all the 40 shows. She said that after 2.4 million tickets being sold and after all the seats being accounted for, there were only about 6,000 tickets left per stadium after all these pre-sales. So she was like, that's not enough to go on for a general sale. And this is obviously like very estimated, but she was like, and that's not counting for also like uh, tickets for charity, tickets for also like, in the industry. like radio stations, exactly. you know, they give them away. Exactly. Stuff. So she was like, wow. there was like physically no way to even do general 
sale because there like there was no way that was going to happen. I hope she just keeps adding more. more That's things. what I figured she was going to yeah. do. I'm I mean, LA sure. already has so many. Seven. I'm, bitch, I'll be there. All seven. <laughs> That's wild. But I don't know. I, I'm, I am really sad for people that aren't able to go like a really it's it's really shitty the way that they handled all of it yeah i'm hoping they like fix something about it i don't i honestly but also i will say like the way she's marketed this as like the eras it's like even if you like one era of her you're gonna want to go yeah versus like oh i'm not a reputation girl i don't want to see her on tour i'll see the next one you know like i feel like this makes it like even bigger of like oh like love story like all her past stuff did you see i think there are about 40 they might be like 45 50 now that she's added more but let's say 50 to aim higher uh, when everybody was on Ticketmaster at the same time waiting for the presale, there were enough people to fill 900 stadiums. 900. She only had 50 to sell. 900. That's how many people were waiting. Math ain't mathin. <laughs> like what? I think though. No, 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 that's no, no, what I saw. no, no, yeah. no. That's, I'm sure that's right. I'm just like, that doesn't like how, like what? That's insane. She is so I'm cu- I would love Famous. to know though how many people of those were bots. Like bots reseller, like how many of like that's what I want to know. Is there a way to for them to detect bots and resellers? Like there oh, has I'm, to be some sort of percent. There okay, has like to be something. My guess is they just don't like want to. Because know? then when the bots sell them later or resellers for yeah. more they get the kickback. It is corrupt. It is. I'm like some people just want they just want to see their they queen. Just want to see Taylor <laughs> at like a, a decent price. Yeah, I will say I saw that she also opted for the pricing where if like depending on how many people is it dynamic pricing I think that's what it's called for how many people are in the queue essentially or like how many people are wanting it like it raises the prices as opposed to being a flat rate. Yeah, I I think that makes more sense honestly because if it's flat, people are still going to resell it for crazy. Um, uh, I see that. Right? Okay. Or am I wrong? I don't no, know. No, I mean, I see that too. I just think for the people that can get it though at yeah. that price, I hope that enough people would, that it's, it's yeah. you know, feasible for also, them. Also, it is hard too to know like supply and demand of how much, it's like, hey, what's the worth of this ticket? Uh, in my head, I just feel like she shouldn't have done it. Like she has so much money already. It's not, oh, and she's totally, not doing it for money totally, either. Yeah. But. No, I think, yeah, I get that. I, get I that. heard that Olivia Rodrigo's team, I guess, because she sold out so quickly and she wasn't even doing stadiums. Obviously she was doing like smaller theaters yeah. for her first tour. Yeah. Their team bought back a bunch of the tickets from resellers to then just sell at the, the normal oh, price. Oh, See, I love that. Which some like, maybe she could do that, but I don't know. I'm sure people have already bought you reseller know tickets though. It's a lose lose for her. Yeah. It's like either way, like she knew all this shit. It's like, it's a lose lose. Like it's going to be you too much. Win. It's going to be, you just can't. Yeah. That would, that would suck. Sorry. We're really going on the Swifty talk right it's, now. No, it's just so interesting to me. I'm sure. At the end of the day, this is not what she wanted, I'm sure. Oh, no. So hopefully they can find some sort of situation. Maybe she will add more tickets. I don't know. I'm sure Beyonce's like, thanks, bitch. <laughs> I saw, <laughs> oh my, truly though, yeah. like figuring out the kinks. I saw someone said maybe even she could do like a 360 stage. So maybe they could sell those. Like Harry's extra. was 360. That, I mean, that's smart. And it was sick. We will see. But I will say, I think safety wise and security wise, it didn't make a sense because they like he had to be pushed out in a thing. And yes. everyone, like- like there's no backstage. Yeah. So I do think it's not as safe. It was cool because more people got to see him up close, but I will say for the people who were in the front, if he wasn't by their corner, like you couldn't see him. Uh, so like, I don't know. Miss Taylor also loves a catwalk. Oh she my God. Her I want, I want that this catwalk. blown up snakes and shit, you know? I can't wait. Did you see the, the theory that uh, each tour date is going to be did. a different era? I hope it's not. But also she's going to have to change it up somehow. So I could see that being, maybe it's just like more focused on those. Mm. I don't know. I wonder if maybe, so why people were saying that was because all of the openers that mm-hmm. she has, how many was it? Six different openers? Nine. She had obviously like a little uh, emoji. emoji next to each of the openers that kind of almost looked like it was for each album. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, in my head, I was like, maybe they'll, Cause I don't think she's going to switch it up for each one because I think first of all, that'd be really sad for people. And also that's a lot for the dancers, for, for, her, for yeah. her, for everyone to memorize. So I think, and this is my theory, the opener, maybe sh- the, the opener will do a song from the with correlated her? emoji with her. Oh, that's cute. That's what I'm thinking. I like, I like that idea. I honestly like, I don't think it's going to be fully that cause there'd be way too many disappointed people. Mm-hmm. But, um, also, what's funny is like if I was making an album, I would like I'm like, oh cute, we'll have the emojis match album. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like so I'm sure it could like, be something as simple as that, but yeah. she's just so 
I know. So planned. I'm not sure. I know. I will say, I, I, last thing on this, when we were on Kelsey's podcast, I, Kelsey Kreppel's, I remember, like, I relate to her when she was like, sometimes I feel like seeing too many things get me too excited. And then when it doesn't come true, I'm let down versus like, I want to be surprised. Do you know what I mean? Yes. And I feel like with, like, there was too many theories and stuff where I, I was in a rabbit hole. My algorithm was algorithm. I'm a little fatigued of all the Easter eggs that don't come true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, I, you know, so we'll see. We'll see. I'd rather be surprised. Like, oh my God. I just want to hear all too well, 10 minute version. Are we for that or against that? I'm for it. Me too. I'm for it. A lot of people were against it because they know. were like, it takes up more time. But I'm like, bitch, we already know she's going to be performing for like two and a half hours. I would. L- I want to see it live. What are the top three songs you're looking forward to seeing live most? Hopefully. Oh my God. Mastermind's been my shit lately. Ah. I love that one. Snow on the Beach with Lana. With Lana. Okay. All from the new album? I'm talking whole discography. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. I can't even answer that. Ugh. I can't even answer that. Don't blame me. Oh. I loved that song from the second it came out, and I'm so glad it's finally having its moment. Is I'm, it on TikTok right now? Oh, it's, it was, it's been like blowing up lately oh, on TikTok. I didn't know. Yeah, like the past year. Okay. I would have to say, all too well, I'll take either version. Yeah. Well, Taylor's version, 10 minute or three minute. That's fine. Can she do a three minute with just the new verses and court? Like the new, the like. No, because then we're not going to know what to sing. I know. I just like, <laughs> that's what I want to hear. Like, yeah, <laughs> it doesn't have to be 10 minutes, but I just want the new part. I want jump then fall. You know what I want? <laughs> Two is better than one. See, I don't know the old. old no, that was song. like a collab she did with um, Boys Like Girls. I remember how you looked on the first. <laughs> you, you don't know that one? No. <gasps> oh my God. I know what I want. Wonderland. Wonderland. Yes. Wonderland. In a wonderland. Um, getaway car, hands down. Yes. Ooh, I hope she brings out um Bon Iver yeah. for Exile because yeah. I will did you see the clip of her surprising his crowd? <gasps> yes. It was in I London. I right? was unwell. <laughs> I literally was unwell. Like I was like, can you fucking imagine? Can you imagine? I bet she'll have a lot of guests. And I feel like that, that was just so sick because it like his audience, like Maybe some people like weren't like hardcore Swifties, but like the people who were were probably like, holy fuck, this yeah. is like, I just fall out the fuck. Yeah. I also love like Out of the Woods and Style and that kind of stuff. I love. do love 89. Love. Um, but yeah, wow. Yeah. Anyways, we talked for 20 minutes about Taylor Swift, but that's okay. No, I love it. <laughs> that was so fun. All right, guys. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. Be sure to check out our Vlogmas again, beginning officially December 2nd on our vlog channels, Rem Life and Alicia Marie Vlogs. Yes, yes, yes. And don't forget to shop the new Parallel Apparel Drop if you like what we are wearing. Yes, this beautiful chocolatey brown that's hugging every curve and of the my color. body. Coco. Coco. Uh, be sure to tune in next week. We have a very special guest. And then the last episode of the year is going to be our seasonal goodbye. We love you guys so much. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.